Hello learners, greetings of the day. I am Professor Kirti Kapoor. Today I am going to take up a story with you. This story is from the supplementary reader for class 12, Vistas. Chapter is 2 and the title of the story is The Tiger King. The story is written by Kaliki. Before we begin the story, let me tell you a little more about the author of The Tiger King. Kaliki is his pen name. The author's real name is Ramaswamy Ayyar Krishnamurti. He was born in pre-independence India in 1899 in Tamil Nadu and was a renowned writer, journalist, poet, critic and freedom fighter. His writings include three historical romances, five novels, ten novellas, several editorials and political writings, music and film reviews as well as over 120 short stories. What a prolific writer he was. In fact, the Indian Postal Service released a stamp in 1999 to commemorate his centenary. You can look at the postage stamp. Now the story, The Tiger King. The story Tiger King is a satire on the rich and powerful kings of olden times. The story revolves around a king whose death at the hands of a tiger had been foretold by astrologers. When he was just born, as he desperately tries to reverse the fate spelled out for him, the author uses thinly veiled satire to make the reader laugh as well as realize the king's folly. The story, The Tiger King, has five sections. As you can see in your books, you can open your books, you can read the chapter along with me because it's a good thing to read the chapter along with me. I am going to narrate the incidents to you and you can refer to your books. Now it has five sections. Section 1, Introduction and the Prophecy. Section 2, Young Prince and the Count of Tigers. Section 3, The King and the British. Section 4, The Marriage and the Reason Thereof. Section 5, The Hundredth Tiger. This, through this story, the author is trying to tell us this should not be done. This should be avoided. So it is a piece of fiction, it is not a true story and it is a satire. Remember this, he is making fun of his action. He is not endorsing it. With this, we have come to the end of section 4. Let's move on to section 5 now. Section 5 is where all the suspense ends. But before the narrator shares the climax, he says that the Maharaja's anxiety reached a fever pitch when there remained just one tiger to achieve his tally of a hundred. How unfortunate, isn't it? Let's move on. He had to be extremely careful with that last tiger. What had the late chief astrologer said? Late chief astrologer. That means the astrologer is now no more. So he cannot even go back to the astrologer and argue with him or debate with him. Even after killing 99 tigers, the Maharaja should beware of the hundredth. True enough, the tiger was a savage beast after all. One had to be wary of it. But where was that hundredth tiger to be found? Thus the Maharaja was sunk in gloom, but soon came the happy news, which dispelled that gloom. In his own state, sheep began to disappear frequently from a hillside village. It was first ascertained that this was not the work of people. Once this was ascertained, then the work began. Surely a tiger was at work. The villagers ran to inform the Maharaja. The Maharaja announced a three-year exemption from all taxes 
for that village and set out on the hunt at once. The tiger was not easily found. It seemed as if it had wantonly hid itself in order to flout the Maharaja's will. The Maharaja was equally determined. He refused to leave the forest until the tiger was found. As the days passed, the Maharaja's fury and obstinacy mounted alarmingly. Many officers lost their jobs. The Maharaja got furious at not being able to find the hundredth tiger and threatened the Diwan with a dismissal. You may resign from your post, said the king. The Diwan went home and convinced that if, him, if the Maharaja did not find the tiger soon, the results could be catastrophic. He felt life returning to him only when he saw to, that a tiger was brought from the people's park in Madras. Now, of course, it is known as Chinnai, kept hidden in his house and placed with great difficulty in the forest. So this was done by the Diwan. The Maharaja shot the tiger that was arranged by the Diwan and felt elated and victorious. However, let us see what happens in the story. The bullet had not hit the tiger. The tiger had fainted out of fear, but none of the staff wanted to take the risk of telling the truth. So they killed it and brought its dead body in a grand procession. Finally, the tiger king was happy and satisfied that he had proven the prophecy of the astrologer wrong. Now, is it wrong or right? Has the Maharaja killed the tiger, the hundredth one? No, he hasn't killed it. He doesn't know. Let's move on. Now he started taking interest in his family and in, and in his kingdom. Now on the third birthday of his son, he bought a wooden tiger for his son as a birthday present. The wooden tiger was poorly carved and had rough surface. Now one day while playing with it, a tiny sliver of the wood pierced the king's hand and this led to an infection. What is a sliver? Sliver is a small, thin, narrow piece of something cut or split off a larger piece. So that went into his finger. It was infected. He was operated upon, but unfortunately he died during the procedure. Ironically, a wooden tiger took its revenge and killed the tiger king. The prediction at the beginning of the story came true, isn't it? that he would be killed by the hundred tiger. So in his count, this wooden tiger was the hundredth one. And he got killed by that toy tiger. I hope the story is clear to you. This is a very interesting story, full of humor. You read the story on your own. Now let us discuss the form and style of the story. The story is a satire on those powerful people who are conceited. Conceited means who are very proud, who are very haughty. How does the author employ the literary device of dramatic irony in the story to highlight this aspect? The author Kalki has used this literary device of dramatic irony in the story through and through in all the sections. Let us take the example of the last episode. Only the tiger king is not aware that his bullet had not killed the hundred tiger. The other characters and the readers anticipate his doom as he celebrates his triumph over his destiny. The act of the tiger king presenting diamonds to the British to suit his selfish interests is also a well-crafted plot point. Not only is the British officer so greedy that he helps himself to all the rings, the king is able to bribe him. Each of these aspects highlights the moral bankruptcy of those involved. The astrologers had made the prophecy, you may kill 99 tigers like this, but your death will be 
brought on by the hundredth tiger. The king wanted to prove the astrologer wrong and to save his life. Ironically, he invites his death instead of averting it and not hunting tigers so as to prolong his life. At the end, irony is indeed sharp when the surgeons announce the operation successful and declare the king dead. When you reach the end of the story, you also realize that the supercilious titles used to introduce the tiger king suggesting his power are indeed ironic for he is finally killed by a cheap, crudely made wooden toy tiger. So, the author has used dramatic irony in his story and I have given you examples to show where he has used it and how he has used it. Now, do you think this is nature's revenge? I think so. Let us look at it. The Maharaja had killed a hundred tigers in pain and had to be punished for it. Yes, it was a nature's revenge. I have used the word satire in relation to this story, but would you do the same? What do you understand by satire? Let us understand. Satire employs irony, sarcasm, ridicule and exaggeration in exposing and criticizing the flaws, vices and follies in individuals and society. And this is what the author has done through this story. This story too uses humor to criticize self-seeking kings who willfully exploit both nature and their subjects for their selfish interests. So, is it clear that satire is an overarching term? What makes the story gripping is the touch of light humor in the Tiger King. The some examples are the mention of the Stuka bomber, the king's offer of a mouse hunt, mosquito hunt. So, you will find many examples, incoherent blabbering by the Diwan, the Diwan procuring an old tiger from the people's park and its stubborn refusal to get off the car followed by the description of its waiting in humble supplication to be shot, right. So, next question is, what is the author's indirect comment on subjecting innocent animals to the willfulness of human beings? Yes, the attitude of human beings towards wild animals. The author does not make any direct comment about it in the story, but he masterfully presents the fact that for centuries innocent animals have been subjected to the willfulness of human beings. The story reveals not only the callousness of human beings towards wildlife, but their disregard for maintaining ecological balance, the extinction of tiger species in Pratibandapuram and the state ruled by Maharaja's father-in-law. They are illustrations that show man's cruelty towards wild animals. That an old tiger had to be brought from the people's park in Madras to satisfy the king's whim. To kill 100 tigers underlines the sheer abs absurdity of such acts. Now, there is a question for you to think and write about it. How would you describe the behavior of the Maharaja's minions towards him? Do you find them truly sincere towards him or are they driven by fear when they obey him? So, let us understand what a minion is. A minion is an unimportant person in an organization who has to obey the orders. The Maharaja has many minions and they obey him faithfully. They dare not disobey him or contradict him. They try to keep the Maharaja in good humor. Even the Diwan is no exception. The king's bullet misses the hundred tiger. It faints from the shock and falls as a crumpled heap. The hunters realize the truth, but they decide not to reveal it to the king. They fear that they might lose their jobs. Now, we have come to the writing section. There are a few questions that I want you to think and 
right. Have we disturbed our ecological balance? Have we? Not from the point of view of the story. Now we are connecting the story to the world around us. You have to give me your opinion. What are some of the ill effects of imbalance between man and nature? Write an article in about 150 to 200 words to suggest some ways to maintain the much required balance where everyone, nature, birds, animals and human beings are taken care of. I think this is our duty. So please write an article and share with us. You can send your article to us on our CIT NCRT email ID address and we will definitely get back to you. I have one project work for you. As this story has told us many aspects so we must work on one aspect at least. The project work is find out about India's initiative Project Tiger. Draw a map of India and indicate all the tiger reserves in the country and their tiger population. That is one task to begin with. So therefore, to do this project, you have to do some research. Go to the library. Hmm? or you can google it you have to do some research then only you will be able to do this next step is find out if conservationists in india have a system of naming and tracking tigers do they have or they don't you have to find out do you know there was ever a tiger named machli in india find out about this tiger how did she get that name and why was she famous? Also research and write a hundred word note on how technology helps save the tiger from extinction. Yes, you may also draw or post pictures of tigers in their natural habitat. Finally, create a poster highlighting why tiger conservation is necessary using the original image that you have created and share it with your class fellows, teachers, family, neighbors and friends. You must do this project. It will really tell you about tigers and how we can preserve our ecological system. If you are passionate about conservation, then you can carry out similar projects about other birds and animals facing the threat of extinction due to human self-interest. I have come to the end of this session now and with a quotation I want to close this session. The quotation is in the words of a conservationist, if we pollute the air, water and soil that keeps us alive and well and destroy the biodiversity that allows natural systems to function, no amount of money will save us. With this, we have come to the end of this session. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please read your lesson carefully, do the project, do the writing work. Thank you for being with us.